Okay, good morning everybody. Today we will see a bit of HTML and CSS for the first exercise. Uh, it's just the, this is the tip of the iceberg because there, is, there are a lot of elements that you should consider by just the beginning for uh, being able to start with that. Um, the interesting thing about this is that you will start uh, writing a bit of code which is HTML and its representation, the CSS. Uh, so you will start to familiarize with writing a code and seeing the results in terms of design and outcome. Um, the nice and interesting part about this is that you can see the HTML and CSS of each every, and every page that you see online. So for example, uh, in this case, I can see the, the source code of this page, so you can learn how it was done and so on. So this is very simple. Um, and then if you uh, install more add-ons, like in this case for Firefox, you have the web developer. Which is this. You can then do much more things and you will have this menu. So for example, you can disable the CSS, so you can see how it is, it is without CSS. You can disable the images. Okay. You can get information about elements. So, for example, you click on this, and here you have all the information about the element. You can see all the structure, for example, with this. Okay, these are the, all the elements of the web page, and we will see what this means. The name of the object. Yes, they call div. All the boxes of the pages are div. Um, we will maybe go into depth with this later. The important thing that you have this in Firefox, so that's a bit more of help when you want to analyze uh, a web page. And there are many ways for editing HTML and CSS. There are what you see is what you get uh, editors. I prefer to work with code, so at least you start understanding the basic of the code, uh, because then you will probably use for uh, writing content for web pages, uh, blogs, and so on. So my suggestion is to use this open source editor called brackets.io. Uh, it should be multi-platform. <coughs> The interesting thing, well, on one side, it is built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript itself. The other thing is uh, designed specifically for that. And you will see also a live preview of the code you are editing. So in this case, if you open it, you have the different files. So let's say that we open the, the sample that's inside. And if you do file live preview, it will open a small server in Chrome where you see in real time the content of the page. An interesting thing that you can edit it. And in real time it's edited. Okay, so you see the element that's edited how it is changing. The difference between that and what you see what you, is what you get is the graphical approach. In what you see what you get you design directly here. Okay, and then maybe you, you change the code. Here you change the code and then you see the results in real time. Uh, you can see there are also web applications like this, uh, where you can edit the code online in the browser and see in real time you have to register, but it's free only for one project, if I remember well. But you need the connection to work with this, web connection. With, with brackets you can work on your desktop. Okay, so we'll try to do one new uh, file. Okay, I will save it before. I need to save it as HTML, otherwise you can't see the, uh, the live preview. So we call test.html. And now of course it's empty. Okay, because there is nothing. So the first thing you need to create uh, a tag called HTML. As you see, uh, brackets will uh, already help you in uh, suggesting you the, 
the, the tags and the code. Then you need to add two more uh, elements. One is the head and one is the body. The head has meta information about the pages and the body has the information about the page. So you see you have head and see you have body. Okay. And okay, now you see we have this, we have the body, so you see this is the whole page, but there's nothing yet. The first thing we can add a title. remember all of them meta name content can you yes okay is the, the common to select the suggest it's, it's automatic. With enter, uh, enter it will okay. take it. Sorry, yes, it's title. Uh, it's possible to see uh, the, the commands that complete uh, with the auto complete before they are completed. So if you start with the uh, A, for example, mm -hmm. and you have uh, many tags with, uh, that starts with A, you can see that. Which tags are possible with A? For example, uh, let's write, for example, a paragraph. Okay, so it's B. Yes. So, for example, you start, yes. you have the wall, okay, the wall elements. So, in this case, it's B, yeah. and it will close automatically. There is nothing more with B. Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, let's say for example, I want to add, I want to add a link, so with a link, the link is with A, and then you need to write the link, so it's href, uh, you can already select the, the things okay, so, that are there. So now it's automatically shown when okay so let's say for example when you want to create some blocks it's with D so you start with D and you need you get the whole list okay so brackets is uh, work yeah brackets works with HTML5 so there are much more elements and commands and so on but you don't need to worry too much about this. We are really doing it even without specifying the, the type of the HTML, because you can specify at the beginning. Yeah. But if, and uh, I was thinking about uh, Eclipse. I don't know if you know yeah, Eclipse I use it. Uh, with Java. When you try to automate something, uh, 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 you can see uh, also the description, <coughs> like uh, documentation. Of, uh, if you do. Yeah. Right click with docs. Ah, okay. Now with this, let's see. Maybe this works with the CSS. You can see with the CSS. Okay. Very nice. You have all the description about what you can do. Uh, but we will see CSS later. Okay. So the div is just like a container, so there is nothing here. So actually, this is important if you want to create the structure of the page. Otherwise, you can just do as it were a text, and you just add the other paragraph. And if you see, there is the one line in the middle. So uh, the paragraph it's used for separating block of text. If you need to separate something, you can also add something else, which is the break, the PR. And this will put it to the ne next line. Okay. If you want, you can also put another beer 
another break. But the idea is that you separate logically the, the paragraph with P. So let's say that, for example, you want to change the style of the text. So the first is this text is bold. So with the strong tag, you have the bold one. Okay. If you want the italic, it's en. Okay. So this is just the basic thing. And you can do much more things. So for example, you can add a table. Table is a bit more complicated because you need to set the tables, set the rows and the columns and the cell. So one thing that is very nice are sites like tables. So here you can generate a table, in this case HTML table. Okay, you decide how many, how many you want. Okay, you can set many different things. You generate, and here you have the table. This is the table. Okay, <laughs> so I can copy and paste this. <coughs> this is the table. Okay. If you want, there is also the style in this case. This is the style only for the table. Sorry, Maso. We put it here, yeah. The, the web server is mm -hmm. uh, and now you have the style. started by... By brackets. OK, so when I start brackets, uh, the, the web server will just not see. Yeah. Okay. You just need to be an HTML file, and it will. when you do live preview, it will open. You see, this, this is the web server, so it's your home. The port, the web server? It will file do it. Uh, it will do it automatically. <coughs> ah, okay. You just do file. A file, yes. Please. Sorry. Here you select one HTML file. You do file, live preview, otherwise it's this one. Okay. Okay. You need to use Chrome for this. Ah, yes. You need to have a Chrome installed. It works only with Chrome. Okay. okay. So this is for the table. Okay. Um, the one thing that's very important about table, that tables are for content. So if you need to put some table with the content inside. If you go here, for example, you can also import data in a CSV file. It will automatically create the table for you. Um, let me check. So many years ago, people used to create websites with table as a structure, because that was quite easy to do. Uh, this. Uh, and you can find some very old website with a structure done as a table, uh, and that's really bad. Because the idea is that with, uh, uh, with the table, you create content, not structure. That's the problem of semantics. So maybe it was good in the 90s to do a website with tables, but now you have to do it with this. So don't total do this. OK. Uh, if you just need table, you can use this kind of tools for uh, helping you in creating them. I will just delay the table. So you see you have the table, and you have the rows. OK. Now we can already see a bit of things about the style. At the beginning, uh, you have to open, uh, the, the style was done with HTML, HTML so, so it was encoded with the content. So you, do, you needed to write the style for each page, for each element. The problem was, first, let's separate the content from the style. And the other thing was, OK, but if I have 100 files and they have the same style, then I have to write it again for 100 files, and if I need to edit I need to do that. So the idea was 
uh, let's create another language called CSS, which is a cascade style sheet. Uh, cascade because you can you have inheritance of elements, so uh, if one element is inside another, it gets the style from the parent. And the idea was you can put the style inside the HTML file or you can put in an external file. Okay. In this case, we have the style inside. In the head, you have the style tag, the type, text CSS, and you have the style. This is for the table. <coughs> Um, this is something that you can do very quickly. Something else you can do is you go to the element, so for example, in this case, this, you write style. In here, you write the CSS, so for example, let's change the color. So the color is red, for example, and now the color is red. Um, for the color, <clears throat> some colors uh, are pretty standard, so red, black, silver, green. Uh, otherwise, you have to put the color in hexadecimal, which is much better. But if you need to do something very quickly, uh, put in the color, it's okay. Um, that's something that's interesting if you want just to test, but the best thing if you have more files is just to separate as a CSS file. So in this case... So the style is the... the sorry. If we change the style to the HTML file, mm -hmm. it will overwrite the style that we uh, maybe, maybe wanted with the... Yes. There is a hierarchy. If you put the file, the text, uh, the style, sorry, into CSS, and then you modify in the HTML, the HTML will prevail. Okay. Okay. So that's something that if you want to do quick fix. Okay. But the best thing is just to put everything into the CSS, load it, and have it for everything. So if you have 100 pages, you modify once, and it's automatic for every page. So let's start doing this. So. New file, style.css, sorry, you do file, save as, test.css, okay, so you add it here with link, rel, style sheet, type, text.css, href is the link, so you already see in brackets it will take you <coughs> your local resources, so in this case it's test.css, and you close it. Okay. So now we don't have anything here, but for example, let's say that we want to change the paragraph element, so you do p, you open this bracket, and here for example you put color, see you already have all the elements that you can choose, and you put red. And everything in the paragraph is red. Let's say that we want to put an, an interesting color, which is a bit more chosen than just red. So use the hash. For example, you put something like this. If you do right quick and quick edit, you need to put OK. Quick edit or Command E, and it will open you uh, a window where you can select the color, and you will see in real time Okay, the color. This is X, you can do the RGB if you want. Just stick to X to be sure. And that's nice because you can change once and it's for all and then it's easier than looking for the cold, color code in Photoshop or online. Um, another thing that you want to do, for example, is the text so for example you can do font font family and here for example you put uh, serif okay and this is serif style if you put <coughs> sans serif let's change Yes, it's not with this. Sorry. Okay. And this is general. So in every computer, you will see it in a sans serif style. It's very small, so let's change. And we do font size uh, 20 pix. It's too small, so let's do. Okay. So you can change it. Uh, you can use 
pixels, you can use typographic uh, units. You can use also percentage, if you want. If you do pix, let's say that you're sure. <clears throat> the nice interesting thing about the font family that you can also use specific fonts. So for example, with this I write the name of the font. So for example, Universe, and you see with a nice font. But this is a font that I have on my computer. Okay. So I, we are not sure that all the other people will have it in their computer. So usually you will basically say sans serif, okay, or Arial, because most of them they, they have it. Uh, but now, since it's 2015, we can have nicer elements for choosing many different kind of fonts. There are many of them, I will show you just the easiest. You look for Google fonts. Here you can choose many different fonts, which most of them are open source, so you can download and install them on your computer. But the nice thing is that Google hosts these fonts for you, so you can add these fonts for your website, and everybody will see the fonts because they are hosted on Google. And you just need to copy two lines of text. So that's very easy to do. Okay, so for example, you choose, uh, let's say for example, Let's see, I want this, okay? So you add to collection. You can add more fonts. You can review them, and you see how it's made, okay? Let's say they want to use it. It will tell you how big is the file, so if it's too big for the page to be loaded. You can select the, the family. You just have to copy this link, okay? And here you add it in your HTML into the head. So this is loading the file from the Google website. And then you need to put this thing from family lobster cursive in the CSS. So we go in the CSS. And instead of this, we pass this. And you already changed the, the font. In the HTML, in the head, because it's basically a CSS, an external okay. CSS. Okay. Uh, that's it. And then with this, you change the font of this. And again, with this, you can change it and do something nicer. Okay. Uh, this is a bit extreme, but this is important because with just a single choice of uh, font, you can have a very nice text. Just with that. It's very simple and it will improve your results a lot. Let's say that now I don't want to work with the cursive because it's a bit too much. So let's say uh, I will use, I will check this, the source sans pro. <coughs> I don't want this. I can put all of them, for example, and you see, okay, it's a bit bigger, copy this, you copy this, you paste it here. In this case, you are including all these fonts? Yes. I will not show you. Not just only one? No. So, for example, I do this. And now the font is like this. I'm just using this because it's a bit more clear. So you can use very strange fonts, but try to avoid that. So for example, in this case, uh, let's try if you do bold 700. Never use, but there is a way for choosing one of these. So for example, with these you can change 
we can change that. You see they're here. So for example, another italic. Okay, the not to choose them singularly, but you can take it from there. It's not the same the second parameter. Uh, let me check. Because they never use it. So one important thing that you don't need to understand all the, the or remember all the tags, the good thing is to look on Google and you find a lot of things, especially Stack Overflow is going to be your friend. Okay, it's here, it's font, wait, okay, so in this case, See? Oh. I think it's on. Okay. It doesn't really ma matter a lot how you do it, you indent it, but it this is the way I started, so let's leave it like this. Okay. So this is for the whole paragraph. The interesting thing that, of course, we can structure the content. So the first thing that you can do, for example, you can add a header. So, for example, here is H1, the first one. Okay. Then you can... Uh, H2, you can even add H3, okay. so these, uh, these elements, they don't have any style because we just put the style for paragraph, okay. So for example, one thing that you want to do probably is to put body here, and for example, if you do body like this, then everything inside the page will have this font. Because body, it's here. It's everything that's inside. So in the CSS, do you put the specific uh, some part of the Yeah. And remember that they have uh, there are these things of um, inheritance. So the children get the style of the parent. So in this case, the parent is body. So these are the children because they are inside. So they get the style from that. Okay. For example, now we want to change something for body, and we change the color. Okay. So now you see that, for example, the whole body it doesn't specify, so it's basically the default is black, and just paragraphs they have this. Now it's this color. Okay. Okay, that's the next step. We have two ways. Uh, you can uh, basically say that each element, not just paragraph, have a specific uh, name or they're part of a specific class. The name is ID, so if I do ID, well, this is just. ID, nothing changes. But it, here, if I do this ID, now this is only this, it's green. Okay. See? Because you, you, you assigned an ID to a specific uh, part of the page. Okay. 
this is for only one element okay so what if you want to do more elements you do a class uh, and when you do class you can have more than once because that's the idea okay this uh, ID is for just only one the ID is only for one. If you put more than one, it's an error. Okay? The class is not written with hash, it's written with a period. <coughs> That's the difference with CSS. <coughs> so now you see this is for the whole uh, class. So these two paragraphs, they have the same class, so it's like this. And this is something that you do to all elements. Okay? So div, d, uh, and so on. So let's say, for example, they want to change strong. Strong. I change the color. And I want to change this. So strong is an element for everything, but so now you change the strong for the whole page. Everyone put strong. Yeah. Another element, for example, is the link. The link is A. So, color. So, again, change it. And let's do it. So, you see here <laughs> is the color. Okay. You don't want to have the, the underline text decoration. No. You don't have the underline. Okay? You have this. So these are standards, standards for the web. So if you go to this website, W3, which is the organization for the standard school, you have the list of everything, <laughs> HTML, CSS, <coughs> you already also you can test the style and the text over there. Uh, you can find a lot of website guides, tutorial books, so it's it's really uh, crazy. Just want to suggest. Uh, you know, usually there is also free HTML5 book. So it's getting a lot, That's many people connected. So for example, then you see, okay, this is one book, okay. It's a book about HTML5. So if you look, there are many books. Uh, I would suggest you specific book for specific topics, but you can also look and find for that. This is taking too long, okay. So you can try HTML, CSS, SQL, PHP, JavaScript, jQuery, which is a library for JavaScript, and so on. So you have the reference, uh, you have tutorials, so reference, you have all the references, see? So background, for example, okay? And if you do try yourself, you can try, and you can change this. So for example, if I put this, you can see it in real time, okay? So now that we are here, so we'll try to see the background, okay? So the background is like this. You can do background or just background color. So background in this case is, okay? For B, so this black, let's say that it want something Sir. Okay, so this is just okay, so that's for it. But if I do this to body, of course everything will change. So if I do this, you see they have a different background. Um, one thing that you can do, you can also put an image as a background. So, for example, right. 
ID. So if you do ID, I just missed the conversation. Another ID. Then here we do. We, we change it with dash. Okay. So that's only for that that one. So you can put also any images in the background. In this case, for example, I took one image that uh, can be repeated. You can also put a very big image, but I don't suggest you. If you do URL and here the URL. So now you have the image there. What's the problem? I don't have the visualization. La file? You have to uh, select the HTML, file, live preview. Or you click on this. Wait. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Um, I will try, for example, to create also a div. In this case, a div. Okay. And now, for example, here's a div. <coughs> And here you have the background for the div. Okay. Another thing that you can do, you can set up the size. So, width. Other fix. And the same with eight. Okay. So you can change it as much as you want. Okay. Another thing that you can do, you can say, that I want the div to be like 80% of the size of the parent. So you just put 80% and that's 80% of this. So if I do this, it's always the 80%. Okay. You can also put uh, mean width and spell like 100 pixels. So you don't want it to be smaller than 100 pixels. So if I do this at a certain point, see, it doesn't scale. It doesn't scale lower than that. It <coughs> um, should be under. Color. Yeah, it's a bit strange because the background should be under. Let's try to remove it. So now you here you have this border because it will tell you where is the border. Another thing that you can do that you I also use for debugging, you can do border from one pix solid red. Let's try to do uh, 
Uh, no, I guess this because it is a HTML5 and this is free, which is the last version which I haven't started completely, so that's why. So I guess that Okay. So here you set the size and the style. And the color. <coughs> okay. Then you see everything is uh, attached, everything is glued together. So we have uh, two different kinds of values for changing that. One is the size inside here, and the one is the, si the space outside. The space inside is called padding. So we do padding 20 pixels. And now you have 20 pixels from the border and that. You can also do padding left. Okay, so it's only from the left. They are bottom, left, right, and top. If you don't specify, it's for all of this. Okay. The other is margin. And here again, you have margin bot, left, right, top, and so on. So if I do 100 pixels. Now we have 100 pixels from the element to the outside. Okay. Uh, for the A, for the link, one more thing that you can do. In this case, let's go black. You can set up uh, also the color when you go over it. So it's A over. For example, text decoration underline, and now when I go over it, it's underlined. You can also you can also add more things. For example, um, if you want to do more things, so for example, you can do strong A. So both strong and A have the same color. So you need to separate them with a comma. <laughs> One more thing that you can do, for example, is okay. We have strong, uh, and we have div class, so I can do div class strong. So only strong inside div class has this color because it says strong inside div class. Okay. For example, now if you want to do this, you can do font, font family. Sorry. And now I change the font only of strong. Of course, you don't want to do so many variations, but best for you for understanding how it works. <coughs> okay. So let's try something more. Uh, I will download. Uh, an image. So, for example, I will download this image. Uh, you can open the folder. Folder is in brackets. Okay. Let's see. If I can add it here. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
I will save it again somewhere else where it's easier to get. So document. Okay. So I'm doing a mix of everything, but this should be a HTML5 and CSS3. That's how brackets work, works. So I put the, the image, okay. So for example, I want to put an image. If I want to put an image, the tag is image, okay, PMG. I need to put the link, so it's source. And the nice thing that it will automatically show you the, the references in the local folder. Okay, so I put logo the JPEG and I close it. Uh, sorry, not the file. Okay, and now I have the image. Okay, this is very big. Yeah. So in this case, I call it ID Lab Lab logo, and in the CSS, I do Lab Lab logo. Put width fifty percent. I can change it, for example, so eighty percent. Okay. You can also do pixels, so I can do, for example, two hundred pix. Two hundred pix. Okay. One thing that you probably want to try is also this, so you can do border twenty pix. Oh, it's not working. Is so without a style or the style of the parent. The other thing that you can do, for example, is you put image, EMG, so all the image will be styled like that. Okay, so that that's the basic thing. But if you do the ID or class, then you can change them accordingly. So here again, you can do, for example, uh, no, I think it's just work the opposite. It's from the code you get in the preview. So you have to try. Yeah. yeah. Here, for example, I put padding 200 pixels, so you have this. Okay. Okay. Um, there is the spacing thing, so for example, I can put if I put margin auto. Usually the margin are automatic. <coughs> Something more. I'm not going to cover everything because it will take a lot. <coughs> but for example, the div. Ah, okay, yeah, sorry. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. 
Now, something that we want to do, for example, is text align. And you can do uh, center. It's centered. If you do justify, this is justify. Okay. Uh, one, another element, if you need to insert an element inside, you use something called span. So this is just an element inside it. When you do here, and down. Okay. It's just an inline element. Okay, so if you need to create a tag, like call it warning, if you want to put the text in red, you just create a span. Now, the idea in the class can be yeah. all over the yeah. So span is just the, all the element called span. If you put ID, it's all the element with ID. So you can also differentiate. Another more thing that you can do, if you put padding 20 peaks, you change it. OK? And the same with margin. OK? Uh, there are many, many, many more things. I think that this is just the basic for the moment. The thing that I would like to show you a bit more, uh, a bit outside brackets, is that you can create something from scratch like this, or you can load the frameworks that are already done, and you can build things on top of that. So one of the most interesting frameworks is Bootstrap, which is a framework done by Twitter. And it's very basic, so here you have all the, the thing that you need. You can download it, but you can also pass the code for having it, taking the, the libraries from online. And for example, in CSS, you have all the different components. It, it already has a grid system. Uh, You see, for example, they already have all the um, the elements for the headers, for the headings, and many, many more things. So that's very good if you want to start something more. So, for example, you can also change the style of a table. something a bit more you can have buttons with different colors just by writing this okay so it's really simplified you can have different size different style you can have image for the shape for the image with the border you can put this kind of text if you want to put like okay warning there is something different uh, and so on. So for example, uh, what I did in 2012 with my website for the Fab Academy was using the bootstrap that was in that year and changing from that. So for example, you see the page, you have the style for the image. And for example, I had this pan important when there were some problems. Okay, and then for example, you so see I took the font from Google Fonts. Did you start the CSS? Uh, uh, this is used for all the pages, so you follow it? Or you, you need for each page to say load this, this say CSS. Load the CSS yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can, you can uh, use make more, more preset that. and call. You can use this more, the same CSS for all the pages or a different CSS for a different page. One more thing that you can do, for example, is um, in this case the div. 
the div class, okay? The border is red. If I go here, div class, and I put the <laughs> tile for there, two pixels uh, orange. Usually, what you do, for example, is this. <coughs> I don't know why it's not working, but with this you can override. Okay. Okay. The CSS is automatically in real time updated. The HTML you have to save it. So if I do style for the orange. I need to save it. But I don't know why it's not taking this. But if it will border style that should see I can override the CSS from the HTML. I need to put this important so that means override the parents. Yeah. But this is just in case you need to fix something in one specific page. So the idea is that you should create a specific class or ID for that and then you separate and you do that in the CSS. So going back to this, you see the project, I add the button for downloading. Okay. So that's how I did it. And added more things so you can check you had the file project. For example, I created a span, color ID in green in this case. Or when it wasn't in progress, I wrote in progress and I put the span in yellow. Or there was a problem, I put problem and red. So anybody can have a look at this and understand what, how to, what's the status of the, the Web Academy. Okay, so it's easier also for you to understand what's the status. So what I did this year, I improved this with a new bootstrap. Because my suggestion is you just start from from bootstrap or something like this. You just find framework like this. <laughs> because it's easier because you have everything set up, you just change few elements. You don't have to wor worry about the size of the elements, where they are aligned, because I haven't talked about alignment, but this could be much more complicated. And also because ideally you should check for each browser if it, it's rendered in the same way and it's not really the case usually. So if you Take a framework, it starts from the same style for uh, every uh, browser and every operating system. So, in this case, I created this uh, template that, of course, you don't have to use. Uh, you can do whatever you want. It's HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. But if you have any problem, you can start with this. It is basically <laughs> bootstrap with a few more things that you can use for the Hub Academy. So, for example, of course, you need to edit. Okay, this is the index you need to edit the, your name, you edit this, you have documentation to bootstrap, but you already have uh, a structure for the Fab Academy. Okay? The label change of the footer with the license. You can change the license. This is No, you can change the license. The license is this file. Is this file the license? So if I change here, and I reload it. Okay, and this is for I, I made it in uh, with JavaScript, so the license and the menu are loaded automatically by JavaScript. So if you need to add one. Uh, pages here or here, you create the page and then you edit. You have these files called project menu and exercise menu. This is a list I haven't covered, but now I'll explain it. You can also have a list of elements. It's a list without the starting and the end of the list, so it's just the list element and you add it more. So, for example, I add something more here and I write. The, the things in this list. In this file. In this file. Yeah. Uh, you explain how to do it. 
I some yeah, that's JavaScript, which I also use to say I don't know JavaScript, but I modify the code and it works. <laughs> and that's usually my approach to, to code. So now, for example, you open it, you have then team party. Okay, and that's it for all the pages. That's something that's not easy to do for the Fab Academy. So if you want to skip that problem, you use this. And I will show you. So here it's, for example, index. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's for you. Index, you have everything. So this is loading more JavaScript. Okay. And this is the code that loaded. So it, co it loads the exercise menu, the project menu, and the license. So for example, I don't know why this is twice. So that's a mistake, but it's not a problem. We are free to load more JavaScript files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do whatever you want. So, uh, okay, delete this. I delete the hello here. Okay, so you see, oh, this is a comment. Anything that you see with this and this, this is a comment in the HTML. So this is just for you that you know that you have to replace the Creative Commons license if you want a different license. Okay. And here you have also the link to all the libraries if you want to study a bit more of them. We just leave them as a notice that you use it. Do you have to mention what we use or not? I, I did. Well, the, the code is here. I will send you an email with that. It's, it's on my... <laughs> So the code is here, but we'll see GitHub later. If you want to the logo to release, and <coughs> here you can download. Okay. The important thing that we will see later when I talk about the license, it's MIT license. We can read it uh, here, which basically say that just say that I did it. If you want to modify, you can do. Whatever you want, you just have to say that I did it the first version. Then if you want to help me with that, we can work together in GitHub to, impr to improve it, but that's, that's a separate thing. <coughs> uh, <coughs> what I wanted to show, you have your About, My Lab, and Final Project page. So you have all the exercise, Final Project, and the page for contact. So these are just the basics, so of course you need to change everything. Okay. Uh, you see the images are already styled like this. If you took one of the exercises, they're all the same, they already have a, a guide, some documentation for you how to use it. So for example, if you want to put text, you just put the, the paragraph. If you want to put images, if you put this class peak and the image source and the legend, you get this. You get the image with this style, you get the legend here. And then, of course, that means that if, if you style legend in the CSS, then you can put anything you want. You can change the color if you want the border. So this is really basic. I didn't do anything that just solving the problem of having a menu or basic things. One more thing, there is a library that if you do, you put this with the pre and the class pretty print line <laughs> nouns and your code, you get this. You get the code with the style, and you get the line numbers. So if you need to put the code in your in your page, just you just copy and paste. And if you look at the documentation, you can even load files with this. You can even put a 3D model like this. Okay, so this is the library. It opens STL obj files. This is the code that you have to paste, and here you change the settings. So here in the case is the URL to the file. Uh, with this, you can change the color, the gradient of the color. Okay, this is very basic. Uh, but you can change the size here, for example. If you put this code, you have this button for downloading the file. Okay, so that's the basic thing. One more thing, if you do the final project and you have the process page, 
this load this JavaScript library for doing a Gantt chart of the process. In this case, you need to edit this Gantt.js file, which is a JavaScript file, and there you have everything here. So, for example, is this file okay? So instead of feature one, I call it first exercise, and here you change the date, and here you change the okay. And now it's first exercise. Okay, so it's very simple. You just edit that the file and it's loaded automatically. So that's a good way for planning your project. So for example, I use another library, another JavaScript library that I cannot use in this case because it's a different license, but you can use in your case. And then you can have your own process. Okay? So this is just for you if you want to document and show how you did it. Then of course you can add more things. But that's the basic that you have here. So all the other pages are the same. So you just edit them and things, add things. If you use this, of course, I expect you to change things. So if I see that there is names and name, everything is in gray, everything is in Arial, uh, or everything. You can also use another template. You can use also another template. Okay. I just did this just for making things simpler. Because um, now it doesn't really make sense to start an HTML from scratch. The easiest thing is that you take some framework or something like that and you modify that. Okay. So this is just Bootstrap with few more things. But if you go, for example, in, in Bootstrap, you can have, you can do something like this. This is done with Bootstrap. Okay. So the same Bootstrap, but you can change everything. So this is what you get. Okay. See. So what it is is just solving the, the <coughs> problems that you have with the loading the pages, <coughs> the menu, um, having the basic things, 3D models, syntax oh, like light. But then of course you see you can modify anything from the font to the colors to the style. Um, the only thing that of course that if you use this, then you have to modify it. Because if you leave it like this, then it doesn't you know, get anything. It's important to, to mention what library they base it on, or just it would be nice. I think that probably in the, uh, you should also create probably a page where you explain how you did the website. Now we'll see with the exercise, but probably you will have one page here explaining uh, how the website was done. And so you would say, I downloaded this, but then I modified and I used the library. So I, I did it, for example. So I have the website. And I explain how I did it. Well, just for the first, you just need to do one page about your final project. In any case, you need to start working in HTML, so you can deal with even your own page. Uh, I guess you need also to create a page about you. So you need to work a bit on this, and the more you do, of course, the better it is. So. I guess for the next one, but you can change it later, because you will probably change things through time.